Radiant Black, issue number 18 from Image Comics. So this issue is the origin story for Radiant Yellow. And I will say when compared to all the other origin stories, at least this one didn't suck balls. <laughs> so yeah, I've hated all the other origin stories for the other Radiants. I mean, we only got two. We got pink and red because Radiant Black is basically Radiant Black's origin and his story. But yeah, pink and red, I feel like their origin story just kind of ruined their characters. And um, this one doesn't do that. This one doesn't ruin Radiant Yellow's character. However, it doesn't do anything new. Like, the story is very cliche. As soon as I started reading, like, the first couple of pages, I was like, oh, I know exactly where this is going. And I was completely right. And it's not because I'm a, I'm a smart person or anything. It's just I've seen this story told multiple times before. So this one has a lot of two-page spreads. Pretty much the entire story is two-page spreads. And we go through, like, I don't want to say multiple timelines. Yeah, I guess multiple timelines. We see the 1984, 2002, 2020, and 2038. And at first I thought, oh, are we getting basically a glimpse of multiple versions of Wendell, Radiant Yellow? Are we getting like multiple different universes of him in different timelines? Or is this all connected? And it's all connected because the story that we get in 84 leads up to 2002, which leads to 2020, which leads to 2038. So in 1984, he's young, he's with his wife who's pregnant. In 2002, he's still with his wife. In 2020, he's an old man waking up alone. And in 2038, he is out in the post-apocalyptic wilderness living out of a tent. And so the basic story is that Wendell works for this company and he's trying to change the world. He's trying to bring electronics and have them play a big part in our universe. So we see him and he moves his wife and pregnant family to this new city. He goes to this job. Um, he gets it. He's basically trying to, like I said, bring robots in. But eventually, he's uh, the company starts downsizing. He's forced to lay off people. One of the people he lays off is this guy named Ted who joined the company at the same time that Wendell did when he was young. Okay, he, he joined the company at the same age that Wendell did. And he also has a wife that he moved into the city and starting, you know, trying to start a family with. So Wendell sees a lot of himself in Ted. And uh, he's forced to fire Ted. Uh, meanwhile, his life at home isn't doing so great. Um, the job, he's basically he puts the job first before his family. So he misses his baby daughter being delivered. He uh, misses out on some of her birthdays. Um, as she gets older, he either like, comes late for her birthday. He doesn't bring the cake that he's supposed to bring. Basically, we start seeing that this family is falling apart. And then eventually, uh, he's fired from his job. And his wife ends up leaving him. And the daughter moves on because she's 18. So she moves to college and starts a life for herself. Wendell gets a job at Best Buy which is where we saw him at uh, during Radiant Pink's origin story. And uh, yeah, eventually he comes across uh, Ted, who now successfully owns um, three different businesses. And Ted's surprised to see Wendell, and they basically talk. Ted says, like, hey, like, I seem to remember you being an electrical engineer who also did his own electrical. So when was the last time you ran a job site? Kind of putting into Wendell's head, like, maybe start your own business. Like, maybe instead of giving up and working at Best Buy and stuff, why don't you just try hitting it out on your own like I did? So, yeah, then we also get bits of the future where we see he's uh, partnered up with this girl with blonde hair. At first, I was thinking maybe she was, like, a future version of Radiant Red just because her suit is black with, like, a red visor. But then um, it seems like the other characters that they meet in this world also have a black and red theme going on with them so maybe that's not the case uh either way yes this post-apocalyptic world there's these what looks like robots and they're trying to basically live their life while these characters are 
coming after them. Yeah, I'm going to stop it there. I don't want to spoil everything. I will say that one thing that I had that was kind of confusing for me is the whole robotics thing. Because he basically starts the, the robotics in 1984. I'm assuming it's just like industrial stuff then. Like the, the, he builds, uh, he ends up building machines that eventually take his job. They took our job. But, um, <laughs> but the thing is that uh, there's no like, here's a weird thing that I'm trying to get at. So there's this shared universe, the Massiverse. It's uh, Radiant Black, and then, of course, the Radiant Red spinoff, obviously. Rogue Sun, Infernal Girl Red. I can never remember that name for the life of me, but that's because that series has yet to come out. It's still just a Kickstarter, as far as I know. And then the Dead Lucky. So they're all supposed to be in the same universe. It doesn't make sense, though, because... Rogue Sun, there's no ever mentions of Radiance or vice versa. Radiant seems to deal with aliens, while Rogue Sun seems to deal with demons. And then the Dead Lucky seems to be in a cyberpunk world. So, yeah, the world doesn't seem very consistent. Uh, the, well, the universe doesn't seem very consistent. So I don't know if the... Maybe he's what leads to the cyberpunk world in the Dead Lucky, which would be very interesting. Um, but yeah, the whole, like, what's the technology situation supposed to be at? Apparently he builds robots that are good enough to take his job, but we never see any crazy robotics in the Radiant Black universe, only in the Dead Lucky. Yeah, I, I don't know. I'm, I'm just, maybe, maybe they're planting seeds that are going to pay off later, and I'm just looking way too much into it now when I should just hold off for a bit. But yeah, it's the, uh, the cliche man, you know, promises to be there for his wife and future baby and he wants to put his family first, but then eventually he starts putting his work, his work gets in, you know, in the way of his family. Um, he starts losing his family because of his work and then after he loses his family, he ends up losing his work and then he has nothing. It, it's a tale that's been told so many times. So yeah, it's, it wasn't anything new for me. I guess I was more interested in what the hell was going on in the future and who this girl is and what they're trying to do. Well, I mean, I find out what they're trying to do. I'm not going to spoil that. But um, as I was reading it, I was trying to figure out, you know, what they were trying to do. I was more interested in that than the, the cliche story. But yeah, I mean, as far as cliche stories go, at least the origin story wasn't boring. Like, I knew exactly where it was going. You can easily tell. But... You know, at least it didn't ruin the character for me like the other origin stories did. So I guess that's a plus. But yeah, the art's good as always. Uh, writing, like I said, is it's fine. It's just cliche. And um, yeah, I don't know. I, I was kind of hoping for something different. Like the thing with Wendell is like the fact that he's older than everyone else. I was hoping that maybe like his family would be affected by him being a Radiant more. Like, maybe his family is still together, but he has to put them in hiding or something. Uh, how would it, you know, affect his life if he had a, a wife and kid and they knew about him being a Radiant, but he has to keep it a secret from the rest of the world. And he's trying to be a superhero while also keeping his family safe. Like, that could have been an interesting thing. I mean, I know it's been done before, but you could have done something different with it. I don't know. I guess it's also just because as far as tokusatsu stuff goes... Main characters are usually always single. Like in, uh, you know, Power Rangers, Sentai, Garu, Kamen Rider. Like you never really have the main character have a wife and kid. So it would be interesting to do a tokusatsu where the main character actually has a family. And it's like, how does that affect him being a hero? So that could have been something cool that we saw. But instead we, we get the cliche story about work getting uh, interrupting his family life and then the family life falling apart and then the work life falling apart. And it's like the family life didn't even get affected by him becoming a Radiant because he didn't become a Radiant until after everything fell apart for him. So it's just kind of like, oh, okay. <laughs> like, I don't know. I would, maybe if you have to have the family fall apart, have it fall apart because of the Radiant. So then you have this character who's like, this power is like ruining my life. But at the same time, I can't just abandon it because if I do so, people, like innocent people will get hurt and, you know, I could save lives. So it's this whole, like, he's doing something he hates because it ruined his life. But at the same time, he's doing it because he's able to help others. I don't know. Would have been something interesting. But there you go. At this point, I'm just rambling. 
There's Radiant Black issue number 18. It, it was okay. I didn't hate it. I didn't love it. It was fine. Anyways, hope you enjoyed the video. Hope to see you next time. Take care. Later. So what did you guys think of that video? I hope you guys enjoyed. If you guys haven't already, please subscribe. Hit that bell for a notification. Leave a like if you enjoyed the video. And if you didn't enjoy the video, thank you for watching it this far. And I hope the next video is more to your liking. Feel free to check out the playlist that you guys see. And I hope to see you guys next time. Later.